Hello friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. I've received a couple of requests to make a tutorial covering the shelf library. This library has been there for quite a while actually. And the idea behind this library is to make it easy to create and compose your own web servers and parts of web servers. So just like it says here. And the idea is that you're able to define these helper functions that would run at some point during the request and response lifecycle. So in these functions, you would have your logic to respond and handle the request in some way, shape or form. The only challenge with this is, although it says it makes it easy, the documentation explaining how to go about it is, um, yeah, it's lacking. <laughs> so I've taken some time to look through this and I wanted to share what I've found and how you can make the most of this library once you figure it out it's actually pretty it's actually pretty nice so I'm not going to waste your time any further let's begin we're going to set ourselves with a dart project so if we run the stage hand command we can set ourselves with a project that already has the shelf package in there. So I'm going to do that. Server shelf, that'll generate the relevant files and folders. And then we can run pubget to update our packages. Because I'm using VS code, it's done. It's already done that for me. So I can test. We're good to go by doing dart bin server.dart, which is this file here. And then if I go in here, I should be able to kill because 8080 and I get a response coming back, some feedback. So, which is this bit. So let's add a URL, a path, and then we get, we get back request for hello. What we're going to do is I am going to, going to delete that. Delete the args package. And then this will bring us here. Okay. So to start us off, setting up a shelf server is as simple as creating a server variable. And then the shelf package comes with two libraries. So there's just shelf.dart that has got some base um, classes you need for the shelf package. And there's shelf IO, which is tailored towards setting up HTTP servers. What we're going to do is we are going to invoke the serve top level function. The signature is as such, it takes in a handler and what a handler is, is a essentially a function that gives you the request object as an argument. And what you do is you would do something to that request and it expects a response to be sent back. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to take a request and then we can do response dot okay. Hello world. And what we want to do is because we've aliased it as shelf, we'll do shelf.response and this takes in an address. So we'll pass in our host name variable and for our port, let's define a port. We'll set that to 8080. Okay. So let me fix the indentation a bit. This also happens asynchronously. So we need to await on that. In fact, we don't need this or oh, actually let's use it. So I can print a message, HTTP, and then let's just print out the service host and the port. Okay. Okay. So we run that. And then if I visit localhost 8080, you get hello world. Let's change that. So this is sort of like pretty much the basics of setting up a server, handling incoming requests, and then sending out a response. So let's look in the serve function and see what that gives us. If you look closely, you can see that pretty much what it does behind the scenes is it sets up a HTTP server and binds it to an address and port. And then it calls this function uh, called serve requests. So that takes in the server that's returned when you do HTTP server.bind. And then our handler gets passed here. So the function we defined gets passed in here. But so far, hopefully you should make a bit of sense that it's not so much happening, at least with this example. Let's extend this example out a bit more. We can create a server in a handler using this serve function. So another way we can create a server, so I comment this bit out, we can also do HTTP server.bind, then pass in a port, a host name and port. 
So this actually is not from Shelf, it's from the Dartio library. So if you've looked at, if you see my other tutorials and you see me creating a server, I pretty much do this 100% of the time. Shelf also allows us to work with that dot, dot IO um, library. So we can create a server as such, and then we can create what's known as an IO server. So an IO server is one of the classes that comes with Shelf. So we can await an IO server dot bind. So once that's run, our IO server class gives us a method called mount as such, and that takes in our handler function, which is essentially this. And I can paste that in here and I can save. And if I kill the server and I run that again, okay, let's see. HTTP server is another subtype of type string. What am I doing wrong? Oh, sorry, my bad. I actually made a mistake. So what we need to do is to call IO server and pass in our server as such. So that's the second example. I was jumping, <laughs> I was jumping too far ahead. Okay. So I'll invoke that. Let's run this and we still get hello world as a response. Forget about this bit. It's just the command prompt. So ignore that bit, but we get hello world. So that's the second way we can create a server. So this brings me to the third approach, which is our IO server. And then we await the IO server dot bind, which was what I was doing earlier on. And then we'll do a host name and our port, and then we'll invoke this same mount method. So if I kill that and I run again, and let's add a couple more characters to confirm there isn't any strange caching happening. I doubt it, but better safe than sorry. All right, so, so far, We've learned that there are several ways of creating servers using the shelf package. There's this approach, there's that one, and then there's this third approach. Also worth mentioning, you can invoke this mount method only once. So if you attempt to do it twice, you get an exception. So this brings us to the concept of pipelines. So if we go to the docs for a minute and we look at shelf and the pipeline, so pipeline here it says it's a helper class that makes it easy to compose a set of middleware. So it looks something along the lines of this. So essentially it allows us to define different functions that will run during the request response lifecycle. And then we can attach a handler at the very end of it. So I'll show you that now. I'll enable this again. And let's enable this line. I'll define a variable called handler. And our handler will be an instance of shelf.pipeline. So this pipeline will allow us to invoke methods such as add middleware, and then we can add a handler to it at the very end. So let's, in fact, repeat this. So when our request comes to our server, it will go through all these middlewares. It could, we could return a response also at some point in here. And if it goes through the and no responses are returned and finally gets handled over here. So once we've defined this pipeline, we can pass as an argument to our serve function. So the first middleware we're going to add is one from shelf called log requests, which will just log out certain details about our request, such as a timestamp and the path we're trying to access. So in fact, let's go to definition for it. So if we look at log requests, We've invoked it as a function, which returns this function, which is the signature for a middleware. So what this middleware is, is essentially, it's just a type def or a type definition for a special kind of function. So this function takes in a handler or it exposes a handler and then it returns another handler, essentially. So this handler is also just a function which exposes the request and then you're supposed to return a response. Okay, so let me go back here. So if we look at log requests again, middleware has our inner handler and then we're returning the handler it expects, which is, you know, a reference to the request and then we're returning a response. So what that looks like here is we have our inner handler and then you can define the signature for our handler function which is a request. We can change details of our request. I'll create a variable called updated request, 
which will take our request and we can invoke the the change function and in this change function we can change certain things about this request let's mark this as a sync so this request contains a method called change and if we hover over this we can change certain elements of this request so for example the headers the context the path and so on and so forth so let's add some let's change the headers and i'll add a custom header and let's say custom header value and what we need to do is to let's just return a shelf dot response dot okay and i'll say intercepted and in here i'll return a shelf dot response dot okay hello world all right so let's try out this okay and if i hear local is 8080 we went through our first part of the middleware shelf log requests which logged the timestamp as well as the request method and the response and the path we were accessing and we went through the second middleware so that run it returned a response just a res the raw response so it wasn't resolved yet and then it went to this second middleware layer so this part we just sent a response back to the client so that means this part never runs now if we wish for this part to run we need to work with this inner handler which is also of type well it's also of type um, handler and as i showed earlier on handler is just a type def which defines this type of function it exposes a request and then we return a response so what we need to do is to await on inner handler and then because we're changing elements of the request we'll pass our updated request in here so this means that a response is returned but then we jump to this part now and in this part we're able to extract the changes we made here so in here i can log out the request headers my custom header so i'll save that run this again and when we visit it there we go we get hello world and then custom header value which was set in this middleware okay so so though we've got shelf pipeline there's also a helper class called cascade so cascade here in the documentation is defined it's, it looks similar to pipeline um, essentially so it's a helper that calls several handlers in sequence and returns the first acceptable response so this is the major difference between a cascade and a pipeline i think the idea of a pipeline is it would invoke every middleware function and then it will finally handle the request at this part when add handler is invoked with cascade however we can exit essentially at any point when this add function is invoked we can exit at any point so that's the this bit returns the first acceptable response okay so let's take a look at this cascade and see how we can use that so i will create a variable called handler cascade and we can invoke our cascade constructor and it's shelf.cascade and let's invoke the add method so in here what we can do is we'll look at the request path and if it matches that then we'll return shelf response saying handler a for instance and then in the scenario where that is false we'll just return shelf response dot not found and let's just say not found and then we'll add two more of this block and then let's say if path is b then we match b if path is c then we match c so the idea here is if we send a request to locals 8080 forward slash a that would invoke well that will come to this cascade function this would run if it matches it returns a response and then exits if it doesn't match it will return a 404 not found which means that our cascade will jump to the next function and then this would run if it matches it will return okay if not it will return that which means that it will jump to the next function and then the same checks will be made and what we want to do is to return 
the handler for that. So to use this handler cascade, you can just pass that in here. So if I save that, and I run this, and let's visit locals 8080. So we'll get not found, that's fine. If I do forward slash A, we get handler A. If I do forward slash B, we get handler B. If I do forward slash C, we get handler C. So hopefully, yeah, this is making some sense at this point. And because this cascade exposes a handler that works with all of this behind the scenes, we can actually pass in the result of this cascade into our pipeline here as such. So in fact, yeah, here's our final test. So let's add an else if block here. And let's say if request dot headers, and let's look for my custom header is not equal to null, then let's return our shelf response, which will be the result of this. And let's just revert to our handler. So if this is right, we passed our pipeline in here. So when the request comes to our server, we'll log out the timestamp and the path of our request. We'll mutate the request by adding our custom header. And then the results gets passed into our cascade. And our cascade will make all these checks. We expect this to be invoked. So let's try that. So let's say that, and there we go. So in fact, what we can do is uh, cut this out. Let's duplicate this block. And then in here, I'll have this one. So if our custom header is not equal to null, then let's return that. So the way this will work is our request comes to our server, we log out, details of our request, we mutate the request headers, we invoke this inner handler which returns a response. So we essentially we pass it on to this handler and then this handler invokes our cascade. Let's run this. So if I go to path A, we should get handler A, if you go to B, we should get handler B. If we go to C, we should get handler C. And if we go to a path that we've not defined anything for, let's say ASD, then we get our custom header value. So once the request goes into this cascade, goes through all of these layers, and then if it needs to exit, it will just invoke that and then it wouldn't proceed any further down. All right, so this was a bit impromptu. Hopefully this makes sense. I'm gonna make the source code available on gist. So, and I'll add some comments around it, but um, let me know down below if this was helpful. If not, I will try and see if I can make more tutorials on it. All right, so thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what was presented, hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already. And also hit the bell notification icon so that you receive updates when new videos are released. If you've got any feedback, any comments you want to make, let me know down below. Thank you.